Welcome to the member from Mermaid Stratford, the opposition house leader, to start debate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise to speak to this motion. Um, so, Mr. Speaker, a government usually um, would use an outside service when they are trying to avoid addressing issues that they have limited um, expertise in. That, would use, that is usually the justification for privatizing government services. Government would typically have a good government process to select uh, the right provider uh, through a tender, tendering process. They would then form a contract outlining the services the company was to provide, associate that with guaranteed levels of service and clear reporting mechanisms to ensure that the private company is fulfilling their end of the contract. Penalties or cancellation of contract clauses are included because not all partners act in good faith. Mr. Speaker, the contract with MetaV is not meeting Islanders' needs. I get notifications most every day, and I rise in this house during greetings. I've done it for the past week, sharing at least one situation in which Islanders are being underserved by um, ambulance support. And let me be clear, Mr. Speaker, I'm just selecting one each day. There are several times a day that I could have uh, rose and, and brought that up at other times. Um, and I've asked the Minister of Health and Wellness on this subject to take their concerns seriously because a lot of these issues are being raised by paramedics. He agrees with me that the service isn't good enough, but we're not seeing real systemic change within our emergency services um, and the support that Islanders are receiving. Instead, what we're seeing is this contract is being auto-renewed without even being reviewed. And let me be clear, this was a 10-year contract that started back in 2006, and it was started under the former Bins, Bins um, government. And then it was taken over by the uh, former Liberal government in 2016. That contract expired, and they didn't auto they just auto-renewed. They didn't really look at whether um, Islanders' needs were being met. And for the last three years, we've seen this current government do the exact same thing. Auto renewing contracts without ensuring that it's meet, that they're still meeting the needs of Islanders and the, for those services that they were contracted to do in the first place, that's not good governance. Mr. Speaker, emergency services is life or death. And we're talking about government contracts that are over $15 million a year. The level of service, especially to rural Islanders, is unacceptable. And this has not been just recently. It's been ongoing and systemic. Mr. Speaker, paramedics know the dangers of ar arriving too late or without the resources needed to treat the person in crisis. Paramedics know that care of Islanders needs to be the number one priority. The patients and the families have to be the primary stakeholder. So when health care is pro provided by private companies, the challenge becomes is that usually their number one stakeholders are shareholders. They become the most important stakeholder. So. It's profits over people, and that is not what Islanders should be expecting for emergency services. <clears throat> Government should never enable this. They should never be a partner in that. Something has gone desperately wrong when we continuously award a company that is not that is so clearly not meeting their obligations to provide this literally life or death service to Islanders. Mr. Speaker, the service is inadequate. I've spoken about this many times. There's been many people in this House that have called on the inadequacy of response times in the service to Islanders over the, over the last number of years. So why do we go private in the first place? You know, if you look back at the history, this was many regional providers that got consolidated into one company. At a time, that might have been the right thing to do, and it might have been working for Islanders. But we have to ask, is it still the right thing to do? We tried, and they failed. Time to go back to the drawing board, Mr. Speaker. There's no easy fix to this, but there are short-term and long-term actions that the King sorry, that this current government can do to make things better for Islanders. And in the short term, that is negotiating the current contract, not auto-renewing it. There are several sections within that contract that if you asked paramedics whether it was being met, they would tell you that it's not. 
The minister has been clear that he's auto-renewing that contract for another year and he'll work on it over that year, but this government has had three years to do that. We need a guaranteed minimum service level encompassing actual response times and life support um, that is provided at the time of the call. We need to see accurate reporting and not just on shoot times, which is the only level of service that's in the contract. It needs to be more in depth than that. We need to be looking at what are the response times, not just averages and medium, because those are too easy to play with, Mr. Speaker. We really need to be looking at how are rural islanders being um, serviced through this contract. And with that comes reporting. And if we're not reporting publicly to Islanders, I've, I've called on the Minister of Justice and Public Safety to implement something called Code Critical. Mm -hmm. If we're not publicly reporting what the surface levels are for Islanders, how do they advocate no? Um, first, sorry, how do they know that they're being serviced well? And how do they advocate for better service? We have some of the best paramedics in this country working here in Prince Edward Island. And we should. And we should be supporting them in every way possible. And Mr. Speaker, right now, that contract doesn't allow them to work to the full extent of what, how they, of the uh, skill set that they have. And that's what they want to do. Like, imagine arriving at a at a at a emergency call, arriving at a location, knowing that. You've taken a long time to get there, but not because of anything that you've done. It's because we are understaffed and we're underserved as Islanders. We need details and we need to ensure that there's penalties in place because when you privatize health care, you need to ensure that that service level is at a standard in which benefits Islanders. And if they can't meet that service level, that's not Islanders' fault. Islanders deserve to, to receive that type of tree, that type of health care. Instead of renewing the contract with no changes, just like the former Liberal government did, I mean, you could sit down now, you could renew it for a month and you could sit down now and you could start going through it with paramedics to see how we could do this better. But it doesn't look like that's what's happening. And that hasn't happened in the last 16 years. So, Mr. Speaker, we really, really need to look at the long term and what the, how Islanders deserve to be serviced for emergency services. We need to look at transitioning to public paramedicine. This service is far too important to farm out and not have full control over it. This is not intervene, inventing, reinventing the wheel, Mr. Speaker. We have jurisdictions straight across this country that have both public and private paramedicine. Um, and, you know, we really need to look at what options we have. And that's why this motion is calling on building a strategy, especially to serve as health care rural, for rural islanders, who we've heard way too many tragic stories about um, what their um, service levels have been like. It's no secret that this government has failed in several other public health files, but at least when they are public, there is hope for effective use of public funds and accountability here in this House. We have no accountability when we privatize um, health care. We, vi we lose visibility into the service that's being offered. Private costs are far, uh, private costs more for less. So we might be getting a deal but let's be honest, at what cost to Islanders? An hour and a half response time to take NISH? Like, we really have to understand what are we paying for? And if that side of the house is okay with paying for services that don't reflect the needs of rural Islanders, that's shocking to me. And we really need to start looking at what does the long term for emergency services look like? Mr. Speaker, there is no accountability because Medivy doesn't report transparent, transparently and they're not required to in this, in this uh, contract as it stands today. So Mr. Speaker, it's a pleasure to sponsor this motion. I look forward to the debate that's going to happen in this House today. I look forward to all sides' thoughts on this, but I really think that uh, um, a new strategic plan as to how we're going to be moving forward in the long term for paramedicine is extremely important to all Islanders. And uh, with that, Mr. Speaker, I will um, I will sit down and give everybody else uh, 
an opportunity to speak. Mr. Speaker, yeah.